Hey folks, in this episode, I'm talking to my friend Craig Colvin. We're gonna be talking about how to get out of a creative rut. This is Twit. Hey, welcome back to This Week in Photo. I am your host, Frederick Van Johnson. Today I'm sitting down with Craig Colvin. He is a guy that likes to shoot photos of all kinds of subjects. We're going to talk about the subjects he shoots, but we're also going to talk about the creative rut that he finds himself in right now and that many of us find ourselves in from time to time. How do you manage that? How do you mitigate it? How do you get out of that rut? And uh, Craig Craig has some ideas on how to do that. Craig Colvin, man, Hi. how you doing? Welcome Good to the show. Time. I'm doing great. It's been a while. Uh, it has been a while. Yeah. Where you been? Running the planet, right? Uh, I've been I've been all over. Uh, Palm Springs Photo Festival, traveling the globe. Went to Shanghai for a while. Um, yeah, I, it seems like I've only been home, uh, you know, a week a month for the since the beginning of the year. Oh, I love it. Well, that's the way it should be, right? You wanna? Well, you wanna might be, as well. Why stay home? You can be there anytime. You wanna? It's a, it's a big planet. Well, apparently. you know, I'm I'm actually looking forward to being home for you know, a little while here. I bet. I bet. So creativity wise, you do a lot of photography. The you know, I sort of alluded to the to you shooting a lot, and you shoot. You know, what like a couple of months ago, a year ago, you were shooting a lot. In fact, you gave yourself a self project where you had a self imposed cadence of shots that you needed to get done, right? Yep. Right. So before before we dive into the red stuff, tell me about that. Tell me about that 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 self imposed sort of cadence and what your genre of photography is. Uh, well, all right. So we'll start with the genre. I I mainly do fine art nudes. Uh, in I do it in outdoor locations and uh, underwater. Uh, those are my two kind of specialties. But I uh, do studio as well. Uh, and I'm I'm basically trying to you know. Um, it's not. It's very uh, artistic. I'm trying to show the the human form and how it blends into nature mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that sort of thing. So uh, yeah, I've been doing that for um, eight nine years now. Yeah, uh, and, and you and love it, it, right? Oh, you... I love it. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Yeah, I am happiest when my fingers on the shutter button and I have a model, you know, in a rock. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And you and I shot together in in, uh, in Las Vegas once. Yeah, right? yeah, uh, Valley Red Fire. Rock or, or Valley, Valley Fire. Fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was. Yeah, it's good. To, it's interesting to see you work and how you interact with models and how you go for the shot that's in your mind's eye. You put all that stuff together, and then you do your you, you do all your own post post processing as well, right? Right. Yep. And uh, that's that's where I turn it in from a photograph into art. You know what my vision is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and how I, do you come up with that? You know, before we transition to the red stuff, you know, looking at some of your work, which we'll put in the blog post for this episode. Um, but looking at some of your work, it's in, insanely creative. You got repeating patterns, you've got bodyscapes, all kinds of stuff in there. Where do where do these ideas come from? Uh, well, so the ideas um, they come from a, a lot of a lot of areas. Uh, I get a lot just watching TV. Uh, a commercial will come on and it'll have some interesting lighting or interesting pattern. And uh, I'll just take my phone out and do a screen capture of it. Um, and I have notebooks that I have by my computer, by my TV, in my car. And, and whenever an idea happens, I write it down. And if I don't do that, it, it's gone forever, uh, mm -hmm. typically. Uh, I need to capture it in like within 10 minutes of when I think of it. Uh, long car drives are great for that. I capture, I, I, I think of so many creative ideas when I'm uh, driving just because my mind can wander a little bit. Yeah. Or when you're, when uh, you're not driving, as right. we talked about before we started. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Letting my car do the driving. Yeah. Um, I, I, I also, listening to music, sometimes lyrics, song lyrics will trigger some idea or concept. Yeah. So but, it's, but how it's, do you go from a lot that? Of different inputs. You know, I, I go to any art museum I can go to, whether it's, you know, paintings or abstract or whatever. I go and I will often get an idea from that. So it's, you got to fill the creative um, pipeline and let it just kind of you know, roll around in your head for a little while. And how do you how do you go from that from from, you know, snapping that photo of the screen or, you know, whatever, wherever the epiphany comes from? How do you go from that to hiring the model, taking, you know, taking the model to a specific location, getting assistance, shooting, yep. you know, because it's not just, oh, I had an epiphany of, you know, this thing. How do you, how do you make it happen? 
Uh, well, so that's 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 where the hard work comes in. Um, I I believe that my well my best photos I've ever taken are the ones that took the most effort. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times that's because I'm doing all this upfront planning and uh, you know, I, I'm thinking more about the concept than just being at a location and grabbing a shot. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of thought that goes into it. So I will, I'll sometimes spend a month collecting props uh, if I need them, um, finding the location, doing scouting. And then uh, when, when I get the model and we actually, you know, go to do the shot, it, it that's the easy part. Mm -hmm. It's already, it's, it's been in my head for, you know, weeks. And it's just a matter of executing that shot, right? Correct. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and, and sometimes, you know, I, uh, well, I, I've never had one that was exactly what's in my mind. Uh, but, you know, you, you get real close. The more effort I put into it, the, the closer they get. So let's, let's talk about that rut thing, right? Okay. And, and being stuck in a rut. We've all been there where yep. you, you, like you said you, my question for you is you put yourself on that cadence of shooting a lot, you know, making sure you shot a lot to keep your trigger finger exercise and your, your brain fresh on this stuff and lighting. Um, did you burn out? You know, doing I, it, doing well, was that the was that what happened, or did you just run out of ideas? Like, what what happened? What I, led I to the rest? I think it was a little of both. Uh, yeah. I was shooting a whole lot, especially underwater stuff, because you know I need to shoot that when it's warm out. Uh, and I was doing oh, eight to ten shoots a week mm -hmm. uh, underwater. That's a lot. Uh, it's a lot, yeah. right? And uh, so I got a little burned out on that. But a, a lot of it is I tend to work with uh, themes. In my my projects, you know, I have my bodyscape themes. I have my uh, the nudes in the rock theme. Um, I have my black and white stripe theme. And I, I it whenever I get to the end of one of those, I kind of you know I've reached the limit of what I can do with it. I always go, all right, where do I where do I go next with this? Where do I push it? And I've gotten to the point where there's just I can't think of what that next step is. Mm -hmm. um, and so that that kind of stops me. Um, the other, other issue I've had is, uh, my plans, my visions have gotten a lot more grandiose. Oh, uh, aggressive. Right? Aggre yeah. So I, like I said, my best photos are the one I put in the most effort, right? Yeah. Were, that were hard. Um, and so I, I said, well, I want to make some more great photos, but they're, they're turning into like almost many movie productions. Oh, wow. Um, and that's daunting and it kind of, it paralyzes me. So, um, yeah, so I have it, that kind of happened in October, I think wow. was, uh, when the, the rut started. Yeah. Um, I didn't shoot at all from October till February, Oh wow. which is, you know, the longest period I've ever gone. Right. Um, and then I've started slowly, uh, getting back to it and trying not to just do some, some simple shoots. Instead of the big grandiose things. Yeah. What what kind of simple shoots are you are you looking at? Uh, well, just taking a model out, you know, to the beach, or mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, the, there's local um, Mount Diablo here in the Bay Area yep. has some great uh, places to shoot in the rocks. So I've been doing that sort of thing, uh, and then just some simple underwater stuff, just here and there. Not, uh, you know, I uh, make one a week at most. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, so you're, so you're slowly making your way out of the rut. You're not still in the rut or do you feel like you're still in it and you're still I, kind well, of in no man's I, land? I'm still a little bit in the, uh, I don't know what, what series to work on next. Mm -hmm. I, I have some, in, in some ideas for some one-off shots, which I am working on. Um, the travel hasn't helped with that. Uh, yeah. I'm not around enough to do that. Um, the other the other issue that kind of also triggered all this is I lost my studio. Um, oh, what, what rent, happened? How did that well, happen? Well, the, the rents here in Bay Area just got too expensive. Yeah. Uh, I was sharing it with uh, several other photographers, and they both quit. So I had to uh, – I, I couldn't afford it on my own. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so that's also kind of slowed me down because a lot of the ideas I have are studio shoots. Yeah. So, that just adds I have to go find a studio to rent. I have to lug all my equipment down. 
Um, last thing, last time I did that, I think I had 15 boxes worth of stuff. I had to yeah. slap, slap into the studio. Right? That does not sound fun at no. all. <laughs> uh, and that right, so it, it makes me, you know, hesitant to do it again. Yeah, yeah, I can see how that would get in the way. But yeah, it, it, it's interesting. You know, things shift. You you get into this pattern of. You know, like you're saying, you know, I you have the studio, you have a concept, and you know what the pat what the process is to execute on that that photo. That pattern gets interrupted, i.e., the studio is no longer in the mix, and you got to refigure that out. Then you got travel on top of it, and family, and all this other stuff going right. on. Life and gets in the way, right? Yeah, yeah, life gets in the way. Yeah. And so how do you, I'm just wondering how do you how do you people that are watching this that are in that that rut. Is it just baby steps? Like, what's the best way to get uh, out of it? Well, so in the past, I've, I've had this in the past. You know, every year I have, you know, some period of time where I'm in a rut, a uh, mm -hmm. creative rut. Yeah. Um, and a lot of it is um, to get out of it. I, I go through these notebooks that I have, right? And I have lots of great ideas. And I just, whichever one, you know, uh, well, what I do, I'll go through the notebook and I'll wait a week. And whichever ones I still remember, from that, those are the ones I'm going to go shoot because they, they stuck with me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I try to do the little simple, small ones. Yeah. To start it's a, a, most creative ruts. The way I get out of them is shooting my way out of them. Yeah. Just yeah. going and shooting and not, uh, not trying to do any grandiose, just, just shoot for fun. Um, yeah. Trick yourself. You know, a, yeah. a lot of people were saying, or not a lot of people, I was reading this book, I think it was a book. It was some sort of media I was consuming, <laughs> but it was, <laughs> it was, uh, but it was talking about how to. I've heard over... of those book things. Right? Yeah, they used to make them. I don't know, uh, but they were talking about how you can overcome procrastination because that that plagues a lot of us, you know. And I think right. that directly relates to being in a creative rut, the procrastination piece of it, or I'll do it later, or you know, I don't feel like doing it, or whatever. Um, but one of their tips was to trick your brain by doing a little bit by saying hey i'm only like it's like the garage you need to clean yeah. up your garage and you don't do five minutes you, right yeah. you don't feel like doing it so you give yourself a small manageable task like you know what i'm not going to do this whole garage today but that shelf i'm going to do that shelf right. but then the trick comes in is like psych psychologically your brain wants to do it all so once yeah. you get your brain you trick your brain into doing a little bit it's going to want to do more. Same with, I think same with creativity, right? Once you trick, like you're doing, you're tricking your brain by saying, Hey, I'm just going to do these smaller projects. And then those will expand. And I know you personally, <laughs> Yes, right. you, they'll expand. And then pretty soon, you know, you're putting, you're shooting Cirque du Soleil or something. Right. <laughs> right. So, right. It, it, there, right. It is, it is, it is a trick. It's, I'm going to these shoots with no expectations. And then while I'm there, you know, the creative juices start flowing and yeah. I go, you know, that's where I come up with the idea of, all right, here's, here's the direction I'm going to go next. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. So, so where, if, if it's a curve, right, the whole, the whole creative rut thing is a curve and, you know, down here at the bottom of the curve is like, you know, I don't ever want to see a camera again. I don't care. I'm going to take right. up, I'm going to take up golf or, or building ships in the bottle or whatever, Right. you know, where, and you know, up here is ultimate creativity. You're just nailing it. And you know, yep. where are you on that curve? Um, I am at the, the bottom was in February. Uh, um, so I'm, I'm climbing up that curve. I'm probably, uh, about halfway up right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I'm, I'm hoping with, um, you know, after, after I finish, I have a couple more, uh, trips to do and then I'm back for a couple months yeah. and I'm hoping that's really when I'm going to, uh, it'll, I'll be back at the peak. But see, that's, that's interesting you say that because, you know, for a lot of people to break out of ruts is like, you know, we say, I said the whole tricking your brain thing, but a lot of people will say, you know, to get out of a creative rut, it takes travel, you know, get yourself mm. out of your current rut routine. And that sparks the creative juices, gets things going, you get ideas, and now you're back, you know, right. Well, but not so, for you, because you're traveling all the time. <laughs> well, mainly because I shoot nude models. And oh, I don't yeah. do that when I'm traveling. So yeah. I do street photography. I do, you know, abstract uh, architecture photography. And I do enjoy that when I travel. And I do a lot of that. Uh, and that does help just because I'm shooting, right? Mm -hmm. um, anytime, as I said, anytime my finger's on the shutter button, 
right? Uh, it, it's a good thing. Yeah. So, uh, but I, I'm not focusing on, you know, the type, the genre that I like. Yeah. And and really, where I really want to be creative and have, you know, uh, have all of my ideas. Have you ever have you ever considered uh, experimenting? I know you said you do street photography from time to time and all that, but have you ever considered diving in deeply, like you are with the nude photography into another genre, a completely different genre? Um. Well, I I kind of did that with the underwater. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I, I discovered that in, you know, uh, it was about a year, year and a half ago, no, two years ago now. And, uh, with, I did the first one and then I was, uh, you know, doing, that's all I was shooting was underwater. Um, so that was kind of a, you know, but it, but it did involve models and it did involve, right. Uh, I could still kind of use my same genre, yeah. um, just a different venue. So, uh, I, I like working with people. Um, so I, I don't know if, if just doing street photography or, you know, travel or, you know, landscape or wildlife, I don't have the patience for wildlife. I know yeah. that. Um, and I like sleeping in. So landscapes kind of tough. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's always magic hour, right? <laughs> so, yeah, right. <laughs> it happens twice a day. So <laughs> I always think of doing landscape photography yeah. in June. Well, you know, the longest days of the year. So yeah. you have to get up at 3 a.m. to go get sunrise and then you're up, you know, till 10 o'clock at night doing uh, <laughs> sunset. Right. And uh, yeah, very little sleeping in between. Very cool. Well, you are, uh, I know you are on the docket for F64 Live that's coming up, yep. right? You're yep. going to be yeah, teaching I down am. there. Give us, a, give us a sneak peek into what, what your workshop's going to be on. Oh, well, I still need to come up with that. You're still I? building that? <laughs> <laughs> you like up at Jen's spot? No, so one of them is going to be uh, my lighting the human form, uh, yep. which I have the video, training video on TWIP. Yep. Um, TWIP school. And uh, so I'll be doing that as one of the sessions uh, indoors. Excellent. And then uh, the other one, I'm, I'm leaning towards doing an outdoor session um, and, you know, photographing in harsh conditions. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be auditing your class just so you know. <laughs> oh, okay, good. good. So, uh, oh, what do you mean auditing? You, you, yeah, you, you have to pay up. I'm one of the organizers, <laughs> but I can still audit. I'm just saying. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, no worries. What about the, um, you know, the, a lot of talk has been happening, you know, over the last, let's say three years, let's call it about gear and different kinds of gear and DSLRs versus mirrorless. And now Fuji just launched the GFX 100 as a hundred megapixel camera that everyone's lusting after. And, right. you know, all these different things. What, what does Craig Colvin shoot with? Like what, what is your go-to camera uh. kit to make those amazing images that we see in the portfolio? So I shoot with three different cameras um, for my uh, the model photography outdoors and studio. I'm using a Canon 5D Mark III. Yeah. And the underwater is a Canon 5D Mark II. Uh, and the only reason for that is because I was able to get a housing for a Canon 5D Mark II really cheap. Uh, <laughs> so you're cheap. You're just saying you're cheap, right? <laughs> I'm cheap. Uh, right. Otherwise, right. The housing for uh, my Mark three costs more than the camera does. Right? Wow. Wow. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, and then for all my travel photography, I'm using an Olympus, um, uh, EM one. Oh, micro four thirds. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I love the lightweightness of it. And, um, uh, yeah, so that's what I'm using whenever I'm doing my traveling. So, uh, you know, like I said at the beginning, um, w there's going to be a gallery, obviously. If you're watching this on YouTube, then there'll be a link in the description over to Craig's Craig's portfolio or the blog post, whatever. Um, but in the blog post, I have a bunch of your photos in there uh, and a link to your website. Where should people go if they want to start learning? Well, you, uh, it's a twofold question, double-edged sword here. If they want to learn about you and the stuff that you're working on, but then they want to start doing the kind of photography and experimenting with the kind of photography that you do. Because not many people can do artistic nude photography without coming off as a creep or, <laughs> you know, right. disingenuous in some way, especially in these days. Right. So how do, what, what's the best way for people that, that are interested but afraid to get hashtag me too right. <laughs> How do they dive into it? Um the, the probably the best way are to find meetups in your local area 
Um, there are ones that do, you know, uh, nude photography, uh, fine art nudes, and some of them are very, very good, you know, do very good lighting. Um, some, some are not so good. So you need to, to try yeah. them out. Right. Um, yeah. I, I have been doing, uh, for the past year now, um, some private lessons for people. So oh, cool. that's an option. Uh, just go. contact me and I can, uh, help you with that. Um, yeah. So I, and, and then, that seems like a really good option to be honest with you. So d- to do like the one-on-one, so the, right. the, f- the student, you as the instructor and then a model, maybe a makeup artist or whatever, but you have right. that, that small team with you acting as sensei and, and taking the person through the ropes. Right. I think well, I would so like that, right, for this that, kind of photography, I think I would go for that more than being in a group yeah. environment. Well, you, you're you're going to learn a whole lot by doing yeah. that. Um, yeah. and I, I will travel to Utah or, or Las Vegas or here in the Bay area for that sort of thing. Uh, I've also done it online where they, uh, you know, just direct them on how to hire a model. And then, uh, I've actually FaceTime while they're shooting. Oh, nice. You're uh, virtual there. Like Obi-Wan right. <laughs> use, use, you know, use the focus. Yeah. Exactly. Use the focus, Luke. Um, it. So, you know, there's a lot of different options and I kind of cater it to whatever. Yeah. Everyone's not necessarily local. Yeah. Uh, I keep hoping I've I've tried on a couple of my travels. I've had people in the location where I'm going, but the timing just hasn't worked out. Right. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm only there for a short period of time. So, but that's the, so those are very, various options. Love it. Love it. And people, if people want to do that and sign up for a one-on-one sort of training session with you, either virtually or in person, is uh, contact information on your website? Yeah, Where and where's your website? Uh, Craig Colvin Photography.com. Cool. Uh, that's, that's Colvin C O L V I N. And uh, also on Instagram, Craig Colvin Photo. Uh, that's where I post all most of my work. Um, uh, I I tend to post quite regularly there, more so than the website gets updated. And you can uh, private message me there, direct message me. Excellent. Uh, Yep. Excellent. You're you're accessible, right? I'm so. accessible. That's right. Yeah. And speaking I love, of accessibility, and I love helping people um, with photography. I mean, yeah. I I enjoy the teaching portion of it a lot. And you learn so much when you're teaching, right? It's it's weird. The, the, <laughs> yes. Even when I do presentations, whenever I do, if I do the same presentation 15 times, every time I learn something different about the subject matter that I'm teaching. It's so <laughs> right. <weird. laughs> yeah. How does that work? I don't know. Where was know. that? If you really want to learn a topic, teach it to someone and you'll, yeah. you know, you'll internalize it because they'll ask questions that you may not be able to answer and you'll have to fill in that blank for the next time you're teaching it. That's right. Cool. All right, Craig Colvin, thank you so much for coming on, man. Uh, you, hey, I owe much. you some beers. So <laughs> you and I, we <laughs> at live... At least three or four, I think. At least three or four to start, yeah. So we live relatively close together, but you've, you've been on the road and I've been busy, so we'll make it happen. Yeah, we'll make it happen. Uh, let's do that. All right. All right, cool. Craig Colvin, craigcolvin.com, right, is the website? Yes. All right, man, take care. You have a good All rest right. of your day. You too, thanks. All right, peace. This is Twitter.